Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. How's everyone doing today? Steven, good to see you, man. Yeah, it's been you a while. Got, you still got the Rivian? No, I sold it. Yeah, I figured as much. Did you make a nice profit? Yes. Nice. <laughs> nice. Why'd you sell it? I made the profit. <laughs> okay. Of like 45% of the vehicle price. That's just wild. 30 grand. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool. It was a fantastic vehicle otherwise. I mean, I... Uh, so that and the only other reason why I sold it is it's on the CCS network, which is uh, really poor. <laughs> ah, interesting. Did not know that. All right. Well, it is 10.01. We will let some other folks jump in, but I think we'll just kind of get started. You know, welcome. We're trying to get back on a good schedule of doing the One North call. Myself, Austin Eaton here. Uh, if you are watching the replay of this on YouTube, subscribe to the page because not everybody is able to be to every one of these, but we appreciate everyone that is here. Thank you so much. Austin, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you this morning? I'm well. I'm well. Got a late start. My kid's on a MEA break, so uh, just got into the office, actually. <laughs> yep, that's the difference between teenagers and, and young ones like yours is the... The fact that my guys were still asleep when I left. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to worry about uh, entertaining them until uh, until I have to head off to office. That's awesome. So interest rates, 23-year high. Home affordability, the absolute worst that it has ever been. It was the worst that it has ever been in August, then in September, Again, it was the worst that it's ever been. Yeah. And in October now, it is looking like it is going yeah, to be another month of being the absolute worst that it's ever been. So it's kind of crazy what's going on out there for affordability for anybody that is looking to purchase a home. It's tough times. So we thought a pretty good topic for right now would be just, you know, where to find those next clients? Who are the people that are interested in making a move, where, where can we procure the next deal? With the number of transactions already down so low, um, I think I saw just yesterday in the Twin Cities, we are down 14,000 transactions from last year, which is a substantial number. That's 28,000 sides that have taken place, essentially. So, Austin, I know you've got a bunch of ideas. I've got a few myself. We want you guys to participate in this. We'd love to hear some ideas, some feedback. Anything that you guys have would be absolutely wonderful. But Austin, I'll let you kick it off. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't know I'm if I'm a little unclear, but the numbers I'm looking at for next deals are down. And I think that's happening to a lot of people around the country. The number of transactions, depending on who you're talking to, is down between 15 and 40% year over year in their region. So I think we all have challenges in identifying and building our pipeline. So my idea for today was to have us just look at where we can get immediate business. Uh, Love it. My first thought is open houses and that's kind of a layup, but some people don't pay enough attention to it. You actually have people who are looking to transact and they walk into your open house. You have people coming to you rather than you actively reaching out to them. That is a huge bonus because they're identifying themselves and they're coming to you. So I think that's the lowest hanging fruit. Who here has had good luck with open houses? They've been slower recently, that's for sure. You know, we may get fewer people through, but instead of 20 or 30, you get four, five, six through on a good open house. But the that intent of you folks, yeah, like that? you're saying, 
the intent of those folks is huge. You know, like those, you know, we may have gotten 30, 40, 50 people through an open house before, but you know, we're a lot of them possibly just tire kickers. I think the people that are actually out at opens right now are, are truly there because they are looking to buy. Hold on. I'm, I've got a, an echo, so I'm going to try to take care of that. I'll be right back with you. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I mean, it. it is one of these things right now that, you know, the intent of those I'm, that... I'm muted all the way. <laughs> you're, you're not muted, Becca. <laughs> what the heck? There, I just muted Becca. <laughs> Austin, you're muted now. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was muted so I could talk to Becca. So the... Um, yeah, I could tell that that might be the issue. Anyway, back on task here. Open houses. Um, these folks are ready to go. What you need to do is be ready to go as well. And so what I'd like to do is get a feel from each of you what you like to do to prepare for an open house. And then we can talk about other things you can add to that. Because I'd like to learn a few things as well. Joe, what do you do in prep for an open house? I mean, you know, number one thing we do is we do massive social media ads uh, as geolocated as possible. Facebook, you know, we can only go 15 mile radius now, which it's not as good for that type of thing. But, you know, it does help. So a lot of social media stuff, we spend a fair amount of money on that open house post alone because we want to drive track, drive, drive traffic. We want to get people there. Um, I am huge on door knocking the neighborhood the day before the open house. And what we really like to do is to do a private VIP open house for just the neighbors. So essentially in showing time, we block off the hour prior to the public open house. We go around, we door knock everybody in the neighborhood and say, hey, we're doing a friends and family and neighbors private VIP open house. If you would like to come check it out, you know, visit with us. It is a phenomenal opportunity for you to be able to speak with other homeowners in the neighborhood. And it's private, it's exclusive. We tend to get a pretty good turnout for it. So that's really been one of our best strategies that we use to get uh, high intent additional sellers into it. Yeah, nosy neighbors are fantastic. Yeah. They make a big difference in your long-term pipeline. Most of them are not gonna transact right away. Uh, but if you can identify people who are looking at your open house for the right reasons, that's fantastic. In terms of people who are coming in that day, they're probably going to a handful of open houses that day, or at least 5, 10, 15 open houses over the course of a, a, a few weeks or a month. And so I look at open houses as a bit of an audition for those people. Um, they're meeting agents at each one of them. And they may walk into one where an agent is sitting on the couch eating snacks. They may walk into another one where the agent essentially just sits there and types on their computer and surfs social media or whatever it is and kind of looks like they're working, but they're not really helping. They're just there. They also may find somebody who's super helpful and knows the neighborhood well. Uh, you want to be the one who stands out from that bunch and there are a number of ways to do it. So I try to treat open houses as an audition. And there you know, have been times, that, what's that? Something that we've had really good success with is providing as much value as possible. So we like to have a lot of printouts. The number one printout that has gotten me the most clients is a list of all the other open houses in the area. It's, hey, here's, you can go right on the MLS. You can search open houses in that area. You can do a thumbnail of each of those. It's got the location, the price, the time, all of that type of stuff. And you are now providing not just, hey, I'm trying to sell this place. I'm trying to provide value for you. Go check out the rest of these. If none of these, if you're not able to get into them, hey, we're happy to set up a private tour, that type of thing, as well as a list of just everything that's active in the neighborhood and in the area. If they're in an open house in the area, Possibly they just drove by and saw a sign, that type of thing, but there's some real intent that they want to live in that location. So providing them as much as possible, they're going to come back to you for that. Easy sign-in is always really attractive as well. Anytime you can do like a QR code for sign-in, I absolutely love that. I'm big on uh, Popple. 
uh, at least for like exchanging my information. Most CRMs out there have a QR code for open houses as well. It's, you know, QR codes are the biggest comeback in history, in my opinion. Everybody knows how to use them again. They, they were really popular for a quick minute. They went away and now they're like really back and really popular. And I, uh, I try and use them as often as possible. How do you get people to sign in? I just ask. It's people are really scared to ask. And I think it's as simple as just asking. You can go the whole route of, hey, my sellers have asked that everybody that comes in signs in so they know who was here. You know, it's a safety type of an issue. You can go that route as well. But I think most of the time when you just ask people, they tend to do it, the majority of them. And if they're not willing to, eh, I'm not going to waste my time on them, you know? Yeah, Stephen, go ahead. So I just have, I have the... Um... KV Core and uh, the app, open house app on the tablet. And I just set it on the table. And half the time, people just pick it up and sign in by themselves without me asking them. Yes. Yeah. And then the other half, I ask. Yep. I, I don't think there's as much reluctance to it as we tell ourselves. It's, you know, it's the stories that we tell ourselves that, oh, they don't want to give us their info. And, you know, maybe it's that you don't push it. And you provide a ton of value during that open house. You be that person that is helping them out. And by the end of it, you can ask again at that point. Hey, you know, would you mind signing in? I'd love to stay in touch in the future type of thing. I can send you some additional information about this house, that type of deal. Providing some type of reason for them to sign in. You know, people do a lot of giveaways, gift cards, you know, all that type of stuff. That's attractive. But having something of value where you can send them a list of, you know, open houses. Hey, I'll send you a list for next weekend as well. Just sign in real quick. Yeah. Or a home buyer guide or something like that of, of value. Um, yep. so that you have a reason to, to get that info. Yep. I think a lot of times though, um, at least the way I do it is I don't ask people to sign in unless I've made a connection with them or yep. have figured out whether they're represented or not. How Which, do you go about asking people if they're represented? So this is this is a Phil Jones thing, and and I, uh, if are all of you aware? Raise your hand if you if you know who Phil M Jones is. Ah, so Everybody Phil M Jones exactly what to say, <laughs> exactly what to say, and exactly what to say for real estate agents. Yeah, uh, I would highly recommend it. Uh, I'll drop a link in the chat for the. Uh, for the book. Okay, Becca's going to do that. Um, and it is a great resource, not only on audiobook, but uh, in print. It gives you a framework for your conversations, and I'll probably refer to it again here. But back to Joe's question, I actually just ask people, who's your agent? Because if they don't have an agent, you can say, oh, geez, are you just getting started? Um, have you found it difficult? without guidance in this market. Most people are gonna find it difficult. So those are good questions to come out of that. But rather than saying, do you have an agent? They can kind of fake their way through that. Who's your agent is something that's harder to fake their way through. And you can identify whether they have a good connection with them or not. Yeah, I'm a little more uh, uh, not upfront about it. I tend to just ask people if they've been out touring homes. Yeah. And then it's, you know, how have you toured those homes? You know, yeah. or, have you made, or have you exactly. made any offers yet? Yeah, exactly. You know, is it open houses? You know, you can ask the question without asking the question. And it, it, my whole thing with that is, you know, there's there's a lot of agents out there. Uh, if you drop an agent from a plane in Minnesota, you're probably going to hit another agent type of thing. So there, everybody knows an agent. And if you ask somebody, do you have an agent? It's just like walking into a retail store. You know, can I help you? Is there anything I can help you with? No, you know, that type of deal. People put up their fences, so. Mm -hmm. Which is why I've found that script helpful. That's um, great. I also, uh, along those lines, use a, a starting question from Phil. Essentially, what he wants you to do is ask questions of people that are going to be easy to answer because they will let their guard down if they find the questions easy to answer. And his opening question that I've implemented and it felt awkward at first has worked out very, very well, which is where did you travel from today? And the reason, the reason it works is they'll say, oh, I came here from Lakeville. And then your next question, is that where you live? 
And then you can go into why are they looking to make a move? Do they own their home currently? There are so many directions you can go from there. Now that you've given them a question that they um, easily answer and has some pertinence, if you say, how did you find us today? Which I used to say, it, it, it can be met in all sorts of wrong ways. Or if you say, what brings you in today? I've had people look at me and go, duh, I'm looking for a house. <laughs> well, you then you feel really dumb. So <laughs> where did you come from? Or where did you travel from today? Sounds awkward at first until you start implementing it and realizing the people's reactions to that question. That's a good one. That's a very yep. good one. Yeah. And then um, Deborah, you had asked the question if I noticed a difference between uh, social media spend and attendance. Yes, 100 percent. I, I definitely can see that on ones that we do an ad for and ones we don't do an ad for, there is a big difference in attendance. And then not to bog down all the time on open houses, but one thing to remember, and Joe talked about it earlier, is that nosy neighbors are awesome. They may not be your next deal, but they are there for a reason. Most of the time, it's not because they're they want to see how Bob and Phyllis decorated the house. They want to see how it relates to their house and what it's going to sell for. So when the nosy neighbors come in, even if you don't have great rapport with them, hey, would you like me to follow up with you when the home sells so I can give you the details of the sale? It doesn't even have to be your listing. It can then give you the, the license to give them a call afterwards. Love it. Yeah. So nosy neighbors, don't ignore them. Sometimes they 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 might be weird or difficult, but most of the time they're there for a very very good reason. Anybody else have any good stuff on open houses that they do? Cool. What else? What else you got, Austin? Um, you know, I know I spend a little more time on social media than I should, and. Social media can be a really good tool rather than just a, a, a kind of a blank scroll and time killer. Um, have your antennas up for people's life changes when you're on social media. They may have gotten a new job. Wife may be pregnant. Uh, the kids are all off to college. Look for reasons that people move and engage them through those things, not in a salesy way, but to just say, hey, congrats. So excited for you. Is it going to be a boy or a girl or whatever it is? When you're commenting on social media, comment with a statement and then a question. That way you get traction with them. And the algorithm also sees that you two like each other or know each other, and it will put your stuff in front of them more often. So try to find those people who are having life changes because it's the it's the seven D's of, of real estate transactions. You've got the number of things that drive those transactions, diapers, divorce, diamonds, uh, diplomas. It, keep, it keeps going. But essentially what it is, is you're trying to identify those and engage with the people as they're experiencing those things in their lives. So that's a great way to make use of time that you may already be spending on social media. And it could be on LinkedIn, could be on Instagram, could be on Facebook. It's where your people are. Yeah. I mean, I, I beat this one to death with the team that uh, your social media is one of your best CRMs that you have as far as understanding what's going on. And I push to take it even a step further and don't comment, send them a direct message. Uh, direct messages help the algorithm even further. And if you want to really, really take it a couple steps further, Pick up the phone and call them, shoot them a text message or a handwritten note. If you have their address goes so far in today's day and age, anytime I get something in the mail that is actually hand addressed to me and is personal like that, that, that touches me type of thing that leaves an impact on people far more. I know Austin has phenomenal, phenomenal cards with uh, his name embossed on the top and whatnot. And I 
early on in our relationship received a handwritten note from him. It was impactful to me. I loved it. It's actually, I think it's still sitting on my desk, actually. So <laughs> that's probably also like, that's kind of a dirty desk, but yeah. It's part of my morning routine. I write a note every weekday morning. And sometimes if I have inspiration, I'll write two or three, but I make sure I write a note. And just as an example, I wrote a note because I saw that a friend of mine's son got an award from his football team. So I wrote a note to the son saying, congratulations, that's a fantastic honor to have your peers honor you like this shows that you're doing things the right way. Keep it up. And it. it was a 10 year old kid, 12 year old kid who was thrilled to get a handwritten note because it doesn't happen very often. Well, mom posted it on Facebook and posted a copy of the note and it got traction there. Now that's not what I was looking for, but it's a nice little byproduct of the whole thing. Um, it's great to appreciate people and it's actually really good for your own mindset to have some gratitude and show gratitude to people. So if you are looking to add something else into your daily routine, handwritten notes are a great way to go about it. Yeah. All right. Um, we, I, I, I want to jump into one investors, uh, you know, investors right now, I think because affordability is so bad right now, investors can find deals. Yes. Rates are high, but there's a lot of investors out there that are cash buyers. So it doesn't matter to them. And there's, you know, anybody that is looking to sell their home, there obviously there's intent to do it. You know, search for those properties that have been in the market for 30, 60, 90 days in the MLS and send a list of that to your investor list. Hey, these are all homes that have been in the market for a substantial amount of time. Do you want to make a quick flip? You know, the majority of them are going to need some type of work. Some of them may just not be presented well in the MLS, need some carpet paint, countertops, appliances, that type of thing. And you can go put lipstick on the pig, turn it around. And there's still high intent buyers out there that are going to want to buy those. Investor profits may not be as high as they once were, but there's still opportunity out there. And anybody that is a cash buyer is, you know, king in this market right now. So I'm, I would absolutely agree with that. I have uh, like three deals that are off market because the, you know, I mean, for one reason, one reason or another, but it's all investors that are cash, but some of them are also asking for a contract for deed. And if it's, you know, uh, I'm dealing with an aplex as well as a duplex, and they are considering contract for deed just because of the interest rates and they're going to be able to get their price. So yeah. I would there's there uh, I would absolutely encourage people to go on on the different Facebook sites. There are different Facebook sites that they are investors, not agents, and they are always looking for houses and they're always looking for cash buyers. So if you have anything, you know, work with them. Let yeah. them teach you what they what they can do. Yeah, I love it. And like I say, it doesn't it doesn't have to be your property. Pull a list. You know, it's what we have access to the MLS. There's nothing wrong with you pulling a list of all the properties that have been in the market for a while or everything that's had a recent price reduction. You know, there's there's a lot of different ways that you can do it, but there's a lot of opportunity in there. And then talking about cash buyers, you know, I would move right into anyone who is downsizing. Those two-story homes that they have been in that home for, you know, more than 10 years type of thing, there's opportunity there. Uh, Charlie Lawson's on here. Uh, he's got a title company. I know he's very good at being able to pull lists and can help out with that. Uh, I believe so anyway. Right. Yeah. So, you know, get his information, Charlie, drop your info in the chat. Uh, he'd be more than happy to help out with some of that stuff. It's great mailer lists for you to put together or door knocking, you know, get out there and door knock all those homes. <laughs> nobody is as busy right now as we were a couple of years ago. We have time to go put boots on the ground and go find that next deal. It is, it is a tough time in real estate and it's going to take a lot of hustle. And that's really what it is. It is going to take time and you need to make the time to find that next deal. Thanks. Shirley. Yeah. To, to dovetail with that, uh, the deal of the week strategy is something that Sharon Srivatsa has put out there to um, a number of different platforms. Uh, the deal of the week does not have to be your listing. 
what I do each week. And Joe, do you do this as well? I was doing it for a while. I've kind of fallen off on doing it, uh, but I I should really get back on doing it. I was I was struggling trying to find a deal. <laughs> I was mm-hmm. like, ah, oh, it's taking me thirty minutes to try and find a deal going through the MLS, and I was just like, you know what? I've got I should be making calls to my clients. So yep. yeah, yeah. I've I've probably done four transactions directly from deal of the week since last October. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, and it's not just selling that property. One of them was that property. The uh, the rest of them essentially were, hey, it, you're looking for somebody that raised their hand. So to give you the nuts and bolts of it, and if you guys want to have a copy of the breakdown, I can send it out to our group. I'll post it in the Facebook group. Um, but essentially what you do is you look for what you see as the best deal in your target market the market that you know best. I look at Dakota County, essentially. And I'll look for what seems to be the best deal, a well-priced, well-presented property, or one that has been sitting on the market for a while and just had a big price reduction. Something like that that jumps out at me. And then we use Sharon's framework, which is essentially a description of the property, no links, no photos, just text. And so you describe the the high points and low points. You don't even put the address in there. You just say, hey, this is a Lakeville Rambler that's been on the market for 30 days, recently had a big price reduction. It has three bedrooms, three baths, fenced yard, whatever the whatever the details are. And it is on the market for $310,000. Respond to this email if you'd like details. And so what people end up doing is they'll respond to the email and most of the time it'll be, hey, I'm not looking for that, but I'm looking for this. And then you now have somebody who has raised their hand and said, I'm in the market for something. And that's why the deal of the week works. Uh, It worked with an investor that I just closed with a few weeks ago. Um, I've got a listing that's still cooking out of it, uh, probably come on in the spring where the guy said, hey, I I am looking to downsize but I'm not ready right now. Uh, but that's the kind of thing that I'm that I'm interested in. So it's a hand raiser and it's just another way to kind of beat the bushes and see what comes out. I mean, it just, it comes down to engagement, elicit engagement out of your database. And if, you put, if you put photos or if you put a link to the listing, you lost. Yeah. Because, because then they have the ability to say no yeah. Yeah. rather than saying, Hey, tell me more. No. So it's a really cool formula and it works well. Yeah, I do it. The, the curiosity. In fact, our whole team does it every week. Love it. Yeah. In different formats too. You can do it through a, a Facebook post. You can do it through an Instagram story. You can do it through email. Email's the way that I do it, but it depends on what age you are and what age your target market is and, and where they live um, in communication, whether it's social or, or email. Yeah. I mean, you could even go out and film a quick little video walkthrough of the property if you want to do it on social anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, I'm, I'm at this property. You don't have to give the address. You don't have to give all the information, but you can give a little tour of the property. It, it, you know, according to our local MLS rules, you do need uh, permission from the listing agent in order to post that. But man, I've seen a whole lot of folks recently doing home tours for properties that are not their listings without getting uh, permission for it. So it's kind of a gray area right now, I think. But yeah. Yep. Who else has got a good way to identify their next deal? All right, crickets. Um, I got another idea, which would be the ZMA, which is a Zillow CMA. And it's it's also known as the Lazy Man CMA. I'll put a link in the chat to the um, to the guide that I have on it. Tom Ferry and his coaching system has done a 100-day challenge that uh, I haven't started yet. Uh, but essentially it gives you things to do on throughout this process. And one of the tactics that I think has proven to be really good is a tactic from Jimmy Mackin with Curator. And he does what's called the Lazy Man CMA or ZMA. And the way it works is you identify someone you know who owns a home. 
It may be a past client. It may be a friend of yours who's lived there for a while or some other connection that you know this home um, has gained a lot of equity and is worth a lot more than these people paid for it. So what you this is the script for the text. The nice thing about this is if you're a little bit afraid of the phones, it gets you in action and it gets a conversation going. So the text for the for the CMA or ZMA is, I was on Zillow earlier today looking for new properties in your neighborhood and thought I'd check on your Zestimate. They estimate your home's value is X. And then you put a screenshot of the Zillow Zestimate in your text. So screenshot it, send it to them along with it. And it says, I have my opinion, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Is it high? Is it low? We don't care. Is it accurate? Maybe. Um, what you want to do is start a conversation. And they might just go, oh, wow, that's so cool. I'm so glad we bought this house. You don't have to be all salesy. They're probably going to go, wow, that's amazing. We were actually thinking about moving. So it's a conversation starter, kind of like the uh, like the deal of the week is, but it's um, just a different way to reach a different audience. So I'm going to put a link to my Google Doc in here. Charlie, yeah. you mentioned in the... Uh in the chat here about hosting call sessions with other agents for expireds, for sale by owners, et cetera. Phenomenal. Um, we are actually on our team, we are doing a, a call night tonight that is inviting folks. I mean, this is this this one's more just for our sphere tonight is anyway, but we do Pi Day every year. So tonight everyone's coming to the office. We're gonna sit around for a few hours and call as many folks in our sphere as possible and invite them to Pi Day. Uh, but for sale by owners, if anybody is interested in going after for sale by owners, this is a great opportunity as well. Uh, with, you know, days on market going up with everything that a for sale by owner is seeing, you know, selling a property is fairly easy in their eyes. I have a phenomenal for sale by owner guide that is 15 pages or so long that makes uh, the idea of selling for sale by owner seem very difficult. So it's kind of like a step-by-step -step type of a booklet. Um, I love to call for sale by owners, not try and get their listing, but basically just give them value. Hey, I've got this whole packet for you that is gonna give you some valuable information and hopefully make the process of you selling your home much easier. Now, I, I offer to send that to them. I don't try and get the listing for them, but the question to ask them is, what are you gonna do after you sell? Because go after the buy side of that. Hey, let me help you try and find something when you do sell your place. There's an opportunity there. And most agents are not going after that side of it. And hopefully, you know, the property doesn't sell right away. You provided them this packet. You were the one that wasn't super salesy, just trying to call, get their listing, doing something like that. Hopefully they come back to you because you provided an immense amount of value with the packet. If anybody wants the packet, let me know. It's pretty phenomenal. You can copy and paste the whole yeah, thing. Please. I'd love to. I'd love to have that. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll honestly, I'll just put it in uh, the files in the One North page. So everybody can go and grab it there. Great. I'll also put this uh, 100 day challenge in there. I will, the I will say that uh, last week, looking for listings, I did call an expire in uh, an expired listing. He picked up the phone. He talked to me. Uh, it was his father's uh, home. It was an estate. And um, through just because he had he had a different brokerage and he has a relationship with that brokerage. So he said, I like you. I'd love to use you, but I can't because I need to use this other brokerage. And I said, well, what if I found that agent for you? And he said, oh, well, yeah, I didn't really like the agent that I had and it didn't sell. So I knew a few people from that particular brokerage uh, that we were in the neighborhood, contacted them, got a referral, connected those two. And so when it's he, they're going to renovate, they're going to go back on in spring, probably about 750. And I have a referral. I didn't get the listing, but I got a referral. Yeah. And that's, that's 
it's business. That's yeah. what we're looking for, you know? Yeah. I love it. Hey, Joe. Yeah. Back to what Austin was saying a minute ago with the Zillow CMA. Um, I've tried doing that a little bit and it did bring somebody, some buyers that um, they said they wanted to buy. We went and looked for quite a few places in like January and February. And then they were like, never mind, it's too expensive. It's not going to work. And they're at least interacting and checking their search again now and talking with me again and like asking questions about specific properties. And I'm telling them, you know, there are opportunities now we weren't seeing at that point. So, you know, when they, when they, when I sent the Zillow thing, they were like, oh, you know, hmm. so I thought it was effective. I don't know yeah. what will happen, but hopefully. It it gets people thinking. And then that's really the best part of it. You know, I mean, anybody that owns a home, the number one thing that they're interested in is how much is my home worth? How much would it sell for and how quickly would it sell? So providing some type of information on that, giving them your opinion of what is going on. Phenomenal. Love it. Um, What else do we got? Austin, you got another one before I throw yeah. another one out? I was... um. There are a couple different ones. One I was thinking of is is renters right now uh, are still going to be better off buying a home, even if home buying is not affordable uh, like it once was. Uh, in the long run, they will be aided by getting getting into a home that they own. So if anybody has the ability to make connections with a leasing agent, or a property manager, that can be a great way to start a partnership there and have them identify to you whose leases are up, um, or at least be able to recommend you to anybody who is planning on ending their lease. So three to six months before a lease is up, um, they may be able to help you understand who is ready to go and can use your help. So- well Taking a leasing agent um, or a property manager out to, to lunch or to coffee, talking about synergies. And by the way, they also might be really good prospects to bring in as agents as well, as, as real estate agents as well. A lot of real estate agents started out as property managers or leasing agents. They don't make the high-end money that they can in selling real estate they are probably striving at some point to make the step up. If you're going to put reach your hand out, there, there are two things that you can benefit from. One is finding a conduit to renters who are looking to buy. And then second of all, finding a conduit to somebody who is actually thinking about stepping up and, and joining, either joining the profession or even your team. So Love two it. good two good things to have there. You and know, then you I could also do... Sorry, I want to I piggyback on that while you're talking about renters. It, it just kind of came to mind. You know, a lot of folks send out mailers to non-owner occupied owners. Now, they're not sending it to the address of the property. They're sending it to the owner's address. There's opportunity there to send it out to the actual property directly to the renters. Hey, are you sick of renting? You know, there's there's not a lot of folks, I think, that are doing that. And you can target that list for some of the higher end areas anyway, where rents are likely more expensive. And I know Charlie would probably be able to help pull a list like that as well. So there's there's that one. I'm writing that one down and saving that one for myself. <laughs> yeah. And then my other thought was um, looking at your old leads. We've. As you said earlier, we've got more time than than we've had in the past. Uh, the weather's going to get rougher around here, and door knocking is not necessarily going to be an option for a lot of us. Um, you know, just calling the people who you met at an open house two, three, four years ago and using a Phil Jones script, which is essentially an OFQ. It's opening fact question. And by doing that, I, I think I talked earlier about asking a question that's easy to answer. Here's a, a sample. You know, I, I could say, hey, Joe, it's Austin Eaton with Real Broker. We met at an open house in Lakeville last summer. 
you and your wife were looking to buy a single family home. So that's your opening and your fact. The question then is, did you ever end up buying? It's easy for them to answer. And they, depending on what their answer is, you can identify whether you're going to take them out of your database or whether you can rekindle conversations. What was it that kept you from buying? You can talk about the struggle. And even if they signed with another agent and they've, they've kind of sidelined their their search because of high interest rates and all that. You can talk, you can ask them questions like, has, did, did your agent take time to sit down and talk with you about the process to set you up for winning offers? Most of the time they're not, they're just going to go see houses and write offers and are not going to be great guides. Present yourself as a great guide. You may end up getting that buyer as long as you do it the proper way and are not soliciting somebody else's client. Love it. Yeah, our database, you know, all of our databases are honestly the number one spot. Like Austin said, we have time, you know, sit down, make those calls. It's we, we're we doing another call. We're doing a call day next week. And uh, our <laughs> we're going through our database. We recently switched CRMs and lost a fair amount of information as far as notes go from one to the other. So there's uh, two sides to this. It is one that we are going to try and clean everything up in the database. Um, I am asking my agents to do a thousand dial day. So we're going to be in the office from about eight in the morning until about however long it takes. It is going to be one of the most difficult days as an agent that we will ever do. But going forward, if we make a thousand dials in a day, Making twenty dollars a day in the future doesn't seem so difficult. So you know, set yourself up for success. We all have big databases. Our databases are larger than we think they are as well. And just get in touch with those people. Pick up the phone. The agents that are secret agents that are not out there that are not making the phone calls may not survive this next year. Um, I know that we uh, last numbers that were really popular out there, 60,000 agents left the industry. I just saw a post recently saying that there was over 100,000 agents that got are getting out of the industry. And there's probably going to be a lot more. This next year is going to be a tough year in real estate. And it is a lot of this is, yes, I want to find a deal that I can do within the next month, 100%. But this is also a huge, huge opportunity to build relationships. It is our golden hour to not be that pushy salesperson as well, and to just provide value and information and be that person that they want to reach out to when the time is right for them. And reading exactly what to say listening to it ingraining that stuff will help you be that non-pushy person and i think that curiosity is king especially yeah. when you want to be a resource for somebody what's the one question we get asked most often as real estate agents how is the market how's the market how do you how, answer? How do you guys answer that question? I would love to hear a couple of people say how they answer that question because it is the most popular question we get. I ask them if they are a buyer or a seller. I just I start by asking for information because it really depends. Yeah, that, that's how I answer. I say it depends. You know what? What are you? Which part of the market are you talking about? Are you an investor? Are you a seller? Are you a buyer? Are you a flipper? You know, like. Well, where, where do I go with this? Because it is, it's a different answer depending on who they are. That's a, that's a tack that I used for years and I've just shifted somewhat recently to saying it's interesting. What are you hearing? So you Ooh. ask the question, what are you hearing? They might be hearing that there are some deals out there. They also might be hearing that it's the worst time ever to buy a home. They might be hearing that nobody's buying homes and the market's going to crash. I want to know what they're hearing before I start spouting what I know. Really good. What are you hearing? I love that. And that sets you up as an advisor, not as somebody trying to sell them a house. If you come in with the standard line and nothing, no offense, Mary Sue, I used it for years and years and years. 
I think it's more graceful to, to say, it's really interesting right now. What are you hearing? And understanding what their position is, because we can speak to them more intelligently if we understand where they're standing. Going in our script book. I love that one. That's really, really phenomenal. Love it. We're going to have a lot of conversations here every year over the holidays. You get to see a lot more people. And I, I'm scared to say it's already talking about holidays, but you've got Halloween parties. You've got Thanksgiving, you have Christmas parties. Understand what's going on in the market and be curious as to what people's stance is as it relates to the market. Do they need to move, but they're afraid to do so? Are they sitting on a whole bunch of equity in a house that they don't need anymore? Um, are they renting and they really don't want to deal with, with rising rents? Whatever the situation is, learn how to be their advisor and have some stats. Keeping current matters is a great way to um, have a couple of stats handy for those holiday parties. Diamax is phenomenal too. If anybody is listening to the hot sheet, Byron Lazine, I really, really love that. It's every single morning at 8.30. It's national numbers, but it's it, this is what people are hearing on the news is that national information. And it's been phenomenal. I listen to it the majority of days. Could you repeat that? What was that, um, Joe? So if you go onto YouTube, what you're going to probably want to search is broke agent media. Um, is really what it is. And they've rebranded now as BAM. And every single morning they do a live stream. Byron Lazine does. He's an agent out of Naples and Connecticut. He runs a pretty big team in Connecticut. And he's essentially doing real estate news every single morning. That is phenomenal. And it's it about- gives you, yeah, thank you, Stephen. Yeah, obviously you're watching it as well. It's great. I mean, it's it's really, really great information that is put out there in very digestible ways. Um, if you want to be a member, they have like a daily download as well. I want to say it's like 10 or 15 bucks a month, but it does give you a lot of the slides that they go over, which are phenomenal to be able to share with people. Yeah, and it's also available in pod- podcast form. So I listen to it every day. Yeah, it's a good one. Typically 20, no, typically 25 to 30 minutes or so, roughly. Yeah. No. So easy, easy to, to get through. Um, I had another idea that I want to talk about. It just kind of escaped me. Oh, who's doing home buyer seminars or seller seminars or downsize seminars? Essentially just seminars of any sort. You're doing some Austin? We're, we are doing a seller seminar. Nice. So what we're doing is mailing to about 500 homes. First batch is going to be in Egan. And uh, get, out, get out of my neighborhood. That's <laughs> where our office is. Um, <laughs> and it's, we're looking at um, homes that are two story homes where the people have lived in there more than 15 years and have an estimated equity of more than $400,000. Those are people who can move right now, should move right now, and can probably buy with cash on the other end. So they're more market proof right now than others are. And so we're just going to do informational seminars for them because a lot of them aren't selling because they're either scared to sell or don't know how to start. They they haven't transacted in more than 15 years and they are ripe to do so. They just have something holding them back. Austin, and could you repeat it two story and what were the other criteria? Um, two stories. Um, been in there more than 15 years, more than four hundred thousand dollars in equity. You can move those numbers everywhere. Could be 30 years, could be um three hundred thousand dollars in equity, whatever it is. That's that's how we came up with a five hundred, our first five hundred. And we'll be hitting them through postcards, through uh, phone calls through emails on on the ones that we've got emails for, uh, and uh, not handwritten letters, but letters with hand handwritten envelopes, uh, so that they'll get opened. Oh, here's here's the one that escaped me. Uh, team up with your preferred lender and go through your database, your past clients, and offer refi consultations. Uh, There's a lot of news out there that, yes, without a doubt, rates are the highest that they've ever been. But there's a lot of news out there that is also saying that people's debt is higher than it's ever been. 
So does it actually make sense to sit down and kind of look at what a refi could do? Do they have a ton of equity in their home because they've been there? Could they pull that money out, pay off the other debts that they have, and now essentially overall have a lower monthly payment on all of those debts? which then can also lead to a conversation of maybe it makes more sense to just sell and go into that home that you've been looking for. Use some of that equity to pay off all of those other debts that you have out there. There's there's good opportunity in that. Team up with your with your lender, refi consults. And 8% sounds really high until you realize you're spending 21 on your credit cards. Exactly. That car payment, you know, everything. It's just there's... The debt, debt out there in America is, I think, at some of the biggest numbers we have seen in a very long time. So people have that equity, but they just don't fully understand how to unlock it. More people can be willing to make a move than you think, I think. You think, I think, I think. <laughs> All right, what else do we got? We got a few minutes left here. I'm just taking a look through my notes here and we covered a lot of it. I think that a real key is, is having the skills to have these conversations. So practice them, practice them in your head or with your team so that when it's time to have these conversations, you, you know how to do it. Role play is so important. It's, you know, you don't want to role play live with somebody. You want to have at bats prior to that, sit down, have conversations, uh, have have role play with other agents, with a friend of yours, whoever you got. If anybody's looking to role play, I love doing role play. I think it is phenomenal. I learn a ton from it. And it's just understanding how to answer the questions properly. And if you're nervous role playing with somebody else, mirrors work. Hmm. <laughs> it, it's, it's one way to, to at least understand how these things are going to flow out so that you're not practicing when you're on a phone with somebody who might actually be a really good prospect. Yeah. I need to get better at that. We all do. I, you know, I wish I would role play more. It's, it's one of the things that, uh, you know, we want to sharpen our sword. There's a, uh, old fable parable something about that of the two lumberjacks that are out cutting wood and one of them leaves every day and takes a hour and a half long break during lunch and the other one you know stays and keeps cutting wood but the one who takes the break every day ends up chopping more wood and finally the other guy's like hey you know what do you do when you leave and he goes and he sharpens his axe i think that's pretty good yeah absolutely Well, thanks everybody for, for uh, coming on. Um, I'm glad that you chose to spend your, your uh, part of your morning with us. We'd like to be more regular with this. I know we've taken a bit of a hiatus uh, over the last few weeks. If you know of anybody who's in the business who would be gr a great addition to this call or could use some of the help that we're trying to provide on these calls, please let us know. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, we're going to be doing this every two weeks now. Uh, would love you guys' topic ideas, anything that is top of mind, that type of deal. We'd love to dive into it, crowdsource it. I mean, really, it's what it's for. It's, it's, it's the reason that we also started the One North page is we want to grow together. We want to help each other. Uh, you know, I have a lot of ideas type of thing, but you know, it's, I want other people to come with their ideas as well. We can all do much better together. We can all sell more properties together. The people that are into this type of thing and are showing up are the ones that we are going to see in 2025 when rates come down and they're still around and we're going to absolutely crush business. Uh, Barbara Corkin just came out this morning and, you know, had another viral post about, you know, now is the best time to buy. It's it's such a tough pill to swallow and so difficult to not look like that salesy agent saying that now is the best time to buy when affordability is at an all-time low and rates are at an all-time high and all of this. But it is true what she's talking about, that if you can afford to buy right now, 
you're going to be in a good position because when rates do come down, which they will eventually, we all know that eventually they will come down. But when they do come down, we're going to see 10, 15, possibly 20% increase in prices again. It is going to go absolutely gangbusters. There's so many people on the sidelines. There is opportunity. Be in touch with your people. Don't be pushy. Build the relationships. And there will be a lot of business for you in the future. Awesome, folks. Again, no thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Oh, Caitlin, thank are you, you raising your hand? Yeah, I was just thinking of one one thing that you do, Austin, that was part of what what led me to reach out to join your team, your model Monday, like new construction tours and setting yourself as an expert for new construction, because I think that there's an opportunity there for, you know, people that love their area or whatever, and they have equity in their home and they're looking to just get the brand new home, right? Or anyway, just another idea for potentially um, finding those next deals because especially through hopefully through this you know winter maybe and we're seeing builders offering more incentives for new new clients so huge incentives from builders right now you know people are scared about those high interest rates builders are offering some crazy incentives they can drop them down you know a full point at least we're we're in the process of kind of negotiating one right now for some clients of mine and uh, they're going to get a smoking deal on a house Social media, that's just another one. Don't be a secret agent. Put it out there. Yep. Be that agent. I love Austin's videos every week. That consistency is what is big. Uh, relocation, you know, there, that's not one of the Ds, I believe, but it should be. There's got to be a D term it's for distance. relocation. What is distance. it? Distance. Distance. There we go. Yeah. yeah. But if you, you know, too far, if you live too far from your new job. There you go. I've yeah. fallen off on my uh, YouTube stuff. I used to be putting out a lot of YouTube videos and that's something that I got to get back onto. But it, it's a lot of the YouTube stuff is for relocation and people moving and coming to Minnesota and that type of thing. And, you know, it's, there's, there's a lot of opportunity in relocation right now. Those are again, people that need to make a move. Yeah, no doubt. Cool. We'll all see right, you all guys. in a couple of weeks. Appreciate you.